Welcome to our quick dive into the 1967 movie Casino Royale. If you're into funny, shocking, and sad facts, keep watching because we've got a bunch lined up for you. Casino Royale features a cast of classic Hollywood actors, and you might just find your favorite among them. From comedic moments to unexpected twists, this movie promises to keep you entertained. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this film? Share it with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories. So, grab your popcorn and settle in for a ride filled with laughter, surprises, and maybe even a few tears. Let's explore the world of Casino Royale together. In 1967, Casino Royale hit the screens. This movie is all about a British spy named James Bond. Bond's mission is to beat a criminal named Le Chiffre at a high-stakes poker game. Le Chiffre is trying to earn back money he lost, which belongs to dangerous people. The story takes place in different glamorous locations like London, Paris, and Montenegro. Alongside Bond, there are other key characters like Vesper Lind, who works with him, and Le Chiffre, the villain. Casino Royale won awards for its action-packed plot and memorable performances. It's a classic spy movie that keeps you on the edge of your seat. In the mid-1960s, a film emerged that brought together a cast with a history of collaboration. Ursula Andress, known for her work in What's New Pussycat, shared the screen once again with Peter Sellers, Peter O'Toole, Woody Allen, and Burt Bacharach in a production that diverged from the conventional spy genre. Behind the scenes, the choice of the name Smirsh for the fictional organization in the movie traces back to a real Soviet counterespionage unit during World War II. A branch of the NKVD, later known as the KGB, Smirsh derived its name from the Russian phrase Smirtsbyano. This historical connection adds a layer of authenticity to the plot, emphasizing the espionage roots that influenced the narrative. Ursula Andress, a key figure in the film, had previously collaborated with the ensemble cast on What's New Pussycat. This film marked the beginning of a working relationship that continued into Casino Royale. The familiarity and chemistry among the actors, coupled with their prior collaboration, contributed to the dynamic on-screen interactions. The ensemble cast, comprising Peter Sellers, Peter O'Toole, Woody Allen, Ursula Andress, and Burt Bacharach, not only reunited from their previous project, but also brought their collective talents to Casino Royale. This collaboration offered a unique blend of comedic and dramatic elements, adding a distinctive flavor to the film. It's worth noting that The Living Daylights later incorporated the term Smirtspianum as a plot device, demonstrating the lasting impact of historical references within the spy film genre. In summary, the convergence of talents and the historical inspiration behind the organization Smirsh contributed to the creation of a film that deviated from the traditional spy movie formula. The shared history of the ensemble cast further enriched the on-screen dynamics, creating a distinctive cinematic experience. In one scene, Jean-Paul Beaumondo, portraying a French foreign legionnaire, humorously spoofs a moment from his earlier film. Burt Kwok is one of three actors to feature in both the 1967 movie and another James Bond film released that year. There were reports of angry letters sent to Cubby Broccoli, who had no involvement in the movie, regarding its poor quality and lack of coherence. Broccoli was also irked by the film's deceptive poster, which gave little indication that it was a spoof. He spent years fending off questions from confused fans about its bizarre style. The film marked Veronica Carlson's debut. In later drafts, Vice became central to the plot, with Le Chiffre heading a network of brothels, blackmailing patrons to fund Spectre. This change led to racy plot elements, including a chase scene through Hamburg's red light district, with Bond escaping disguise as a female mud wrestler. New characters emerged like Lily Wing, a brothel madam and Bond's ex-lover, and Gita, Le Chiffre's wife, who took on a prominent role in the torture scene. Peter O'Toole and Delia Lavi had previously appeared together in Lord Jim. In the production of the movie, tensions brewed on set. Orson Welles, known for his insistence on including magic tricks in his scenes, clashed with Peter Sellers, possibly contributing to their strained relationship. Sellers, known for his volatile behavior, punched director Joseph McGrath, his personal friend, during filming. This incident shed light on the challenges faced behind the scenes. Interestingly, Angelica Houston was introduced to filmmaking through her father, John Houston, who asked her to step in as a hand model for Deborah Carr. These events offer a glimpse into the dynamic environment surrounding the making of the film.
In a playful twist on the spy genre, a Bond movie from 1967 featured a unique take on the iconic character. At 57, the lead actor became the oldest James Bond, a record later tied by another actor in 1985. This movie, a humorous spoof, had various actors donning the James Bond persona. The cast added a fun flavor to the Bond universe, presenting a different and entertaining portrayal of the famous spy. The storyline, involving a contest with bagpipers and a rendition of a Scottish ballad, added charm to this unconventional Casino Royale iteration. Different actors took on the role of James Bond, contributing to the movie's distinctive and amusing atmosphere. In this unusual Bond movie, the lead character, after a contest with Smirsh bagpipers, hums the Skyboat song as they head upstairs. This traditional Scottish ballad narrates the retreat of Bonnie Prince Charlie, a character the lead actor had portrayed previously. The movie's ensemble cast, featuring various actors as James Bond, brought a playful and diverse touch to the spy genre. The blend of humor and unique portrayals set this Casino Royale iteration apart, showcasing a different side of the iconic character. In an interesting twist, the film storyline featuring the original Sir James Bond with multiple successors to baffle Smirsh, Spectre, and others could be seen as a plausible explanation for the longevity of the James Bond franchise. Particularly intriguing is Judi Dench's character, M, collaborating with two individuals bearing the name James Bond. The notion of passing on the Bond persona from one actor to another is reminiscent of how Sir James Bond could easily be retrofitted into the franchise's continuity. For instance, Sean Connery's portrayal of Bond could be interpreted as Sir James, relinquishing the role to his successors, such as Daniel Craig. Interestingly, Peter Sellers' then-wife, Britt Eklund, later appeared as a Bond girl in The Man with the Golden Gun. Originally slated for a Christmas 1966 release, the film faced delays and ultimately hit theaters in April 1967 due to production overruns. In one scene, Sellers appears dressed as Henry de Toulouse Lautrec a character he would later revisit in Revenge of the Pink Panther. He even went so far as to have a set torn down after dreaming that his mother didn't like it. Unusually, the movie wasn't screened for critics before its release. These decisions made the production stand out in its time. Amidst the production hurdles of the 1967 film, rumors swirled about a replacement for Peter Sellers, who had departed from the project. Speculation hinted at drag star Danny LaRue potentially filling Seller's role. Despite existing outside the official Eon Productions Bond series, the movie managed to impact James Bond film music. Particularly two tracks, The Look of Love and Casino Royale, became recurring features in Bond music compilations. Further enriching the ensemble cast, Elaine Taylor made her debut, marking a significant moment in her career within the movie's context. Amid behind-the-scenes challenges and unconventional additions, the TV movie became an unexpected but noteworthy chapter in the broader James Bond film legacy.